Tis the start of a Christmas time for the year. Just why? Yeah, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. Um, I've said to myself I was never going to do this two mega pops with the 220 Dark Monkey. But yet here we are. We are going to do this. You will see the absolute horror that is trying to do this mess and as you've seen by the thumbnail of the video you're probably wondering to yourself where's the plasma monkey fan club well we're going to be exploiting two quarter arms in order to maximize the amount of darts that we can throw at these hellions at any given point in time let's deploy Geraldo down before the round ends if the round ends, that is. Uh, you go to strong, please. Now that they're all the green balloons are down and they're just red or blues, we'll be able to have an easier time trying to do this. There we go. And deploy them down before the round ends. Just like so. So this log up here provides a means so that no balloons are able to be popped by the towers which are parked right behind this log here. But then again, there are times where Geraldo likes to disapply himself with the laws of reality. Oh yes, also round 9 is a bit of a bug at the moment. But I think we can fix that with some sharp shots. Being able to provide an additional pierce. How crap that is. We're going to need strawn again. And then once all the greens are down, we'll be able to go back to first. And hopefully this will be much better. It seems to be the case. Yes, these early rounds before we get Jerry's fire is going to be a little bit of a roll of the dice to see if we can actually succeed in this. It's going to be like playing orcs on the tabletop of Warhammer 40k. Your entire role is dictated by the roll of the dice. If you know what I mean, you know what I mean. Also, I think we're not good here because these blue balloons are going to catch up with us at some point. <sighs> Sometimes reducing their speed is better than outright trying to pop them all. Very quick shots will obviously be able to help us out here. Being able to shoot faster is better than trying to just do with what we have if we, well, if we have the money means to be able to upgrade ourselves here, which we did. But done so. <laughs> you can tell by my voice I'm really excited about this particular endeavor. <laughs> Actually, once you get the setup running, it's quite powerful. But it's getting to that point. There were yellows on this round, but by going strong, it means we can whittle down their health so they can go down to blues and reds. They are slower after all, and the slower they go, the less of a threat that they are. Unless, of course, your name is Blue Narius, so then it doesn't matter how slow you go, you're always going to trample over whatever firepower that we have. Can we do this round? I think that is going to be a no. There we go, but some elitist is going to be out there that's like, nah, nah, you want to do true base start? Well, do it without a single upgrade on the two mega pops tower. By going strong, we whittle down this round. Now, this is probably the first round where we're going to struggle without some assistance for our dark monkey here. Even by going on strong, trying to whittle down these pinks, obviously you're going to realize that there is too much to try and catch up with, especially with this yellow balloon. The submarine, I believe, is going to be our best course, course, best course, sorry, for help here. Simply because of the fact that it will provide us both camo decamification and lead pops for early rounds. It also means that once we submerge it, it does not deal any damage to the balloons, which is exactly what we need. An early means of decamification and lead pops. But once we get MIB, well, that means this thing will always be able to pop a lead. Or is Jerry's fire a purple? Or anything along those lines. We can't exactly rely on the submarine too much for pops, otherwise... This number is going to slowly increase to the point of no return. And then we have to go back to round 6. All over again. I believe round 24 of a dark market can handle it on its own. Simply because of the fact that it's quite a weak round. But it does include the first ever camo balloon to the fray. 
And when it comes to regrows, it's always best to try and pop all of the balloons as you go along rather than trying to pop the strongest most ones and then it just regrows and in some cases they multiply like bacteria. Oh dearie me, wash up all of that bacteria, cleanse yourself of the infestation, but rather than bacteria, it's balloons multiplying. Can we do this on round 27? I believe we can. It's just a matter of luck, time, patience, unmerging, submerging, all of that jazz. Not failing throughout the round. That would be a good start, wouldn't it now, you two? It's very simple. We just do the round. Okay, round 28. So we're going to go from strong to unsubmerged. Back to strong again. Unsubmerge. Strong again, submerge. And then go back to first. Initially pop the lead so that then this can actually well target these things. Although this is catching up to the Dark Monkey, which is not a surprise. We're going to have to really think about our future here. Otherwise, we're going to sustain a such a pop rate loss from our Dark Monkey that... We're going to go to a point of no return. But unfortunately, when it comes to this particular two mega pops, we're just going to have to bite the bullet here. And this is going to have to get several thousands of pops before we can actually do anything with this. Even though we've got 3k, I'm not too sure what we're supposed to be dealing with this. Or oh, sorry, doing with this at this given point in time. Oh, this looks very promising, actually. <laughs> Finally got the trick of this round. Oh, we grow balloons, you suck. Honestly, you just keep multiplying. <laughs> I've already mentioned it lots of times. So yeah, two of these and eventually a grow blocker here, which is what exactly I needed to get through round 31. Even these creepy idols for this particular round, they were honestly always getting to the end of the track here. But I need to do a little bit of micro in here because of the fact that these regrows but the only positive about these regrows is that they're not going to multiply like the other ones would. And we put them on this side of the track rather than over here simply because of that. I want them to propel away from the further parts of the track. Like this is definitely the furthest most part of the track. But this is definitely like in proportion further away from the start than over here. Let's get these leads down to non leads and then we can recommence with the dark pop is say so, yeah, i didn't equate for one of these re so one of these camo white balloons that appears at the very end of the round one of the most irritating feelings ever is when you have a sneeze that you know needs to come out but it's just it decides to clean on to you for just a little bit longer and then a bit longer and a bit longer and it's stuck right there where you really hate it being stuck but it is stuck and you can't do anything about it because it's stuck right there and you really dislike it you just want it to go go away but it doesn't want to it's just there continuously annoying you and then you sneeze and you are three lanes on the right on the motorway Round 39. This is honestly a good time as any to get Jerry's fire set it up. And now our worries with the Dark Monkey are pretty much over. Like the first 35 rounds or the 34 rounds are the most difficult of this entire scenario. Initially getting set it up. But now that we have this beloved item in our in our inventory, we can finally do this. Round 40, what is that? We can do, well, we can get mob glue at some point, but not right now. I'm feeling some, some primary training. And then soon something else along the lines of that kind of jazz. So, will we require pickles? Not really. Do we require the extra pierce? Not really. Now that we have Jerry's fire, yes, we can deal with that. So, primary mentoring and radar scanner so that we don't have to wholly rely on this to be able to decamify balloons also it means that these can now target the ddts whenever they have the reach to do so ah purple balloons famous for not being able to get pops by jerry's fire or most of corvus's attacks blue splatter 
blue hoe, I mean hose. And soon we're going to get glue strike, which means that every time we use it, all of the effect, affected balloons, I didn't mean to do that one, by the way, uh, will get extra damage. As long as it doesn't go glue hose again, <laughs> we don't need two of those. We just need one of each kind that's going to help us out here. Shall we go with that? Yeah, let's slow down the Moabs and also the fact that I don't, <laughs> I don't mistake myself on buying two of the middle paths. We do not need that, but we do need Jero's fire, for goodness sakes. That is the majority of our powerhouse at the moment when it comes to this particular tower. We don't have the means of Super Monkey fan clubs to assault around the map. Just being there to perk up our base start in the middle of the map. Is this the best spot for a tower to be? Or is it not the best spot for a tower to be? Who knows? But what I do know is that we have a regrow issue going on here. <sighs> we may need the sub one more time. Or we can just give this fiend a pickles and the sharpening stone. This seems to be far better for some odd reason. Does the pickles and... So yeah, does the pickles actually affect the Jerry's fire in any way, shape or form? I thought they were all external buffs to the tower in which you implement them on, rather than it trying to be a synapse thing with each other. Even though Sharpening Stone will only ever benefit the darts, rather than the fire and whatever this is. We should just stick with Glue Strike at the moment, which I think is honestly the best decision rather than just trying to go for Glue Storm, because I think we're going to need ourselves a few Super Monkey Fan Clubs in order to sharply increase the fire rate of our base dart here. But um, like in every crevice of the map here, mainly the bottom and dude, mainly the bottom corners in the hopes that they do not do any damage against the, well, these balloons. Mainly the ZMGs, because apparently if you hide one behind here, it can still kind of target ZMGs because it's butt end of, a, of, a, of the, sh the longest, most fin that it has sticks out just enough for the Dark Monkeys to be able to attack it, which is rather annoying. These blockades are not really blockades. They are just solutions. If we pretend that they're not there, they cannot be an obstacle to you. Here's our first Super Monkey fan club in the bottom right hand corner of the bottom right hand corner. Most of the screen that we have going on here. Remember, we're not going for a Plasma Monkey fan club at any given point in time. No, 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 no. We have a strategy without it. No, Dark Monkey. You cannot open the presents down there. They can only be opened when we can complete this Megapop scenario with this rather obscure tower. When I mean obscure, I mean just it's a pea shooter. Second Super Monkey Fan Club is in operations, which means probably around just under two thirds of the time we'll always have a Super Monkey Fan Club in operation. I just hope that this thing will not be able to actually target Moab class balloons because I still feel like the butt end of a ZMG will still be affected by these cornered dark monkeys. Ah, oh, for goodness sakes. But the only bright side is that uh, there are not too many ZMGs that appear. There's only a finite number of them after all. These are very slow. Do I need Relentless Glue? I don't feel like it's important at this given point in time, but when it comes to like round 98, every single bit of help will be very necessary, including balloons that will stun, including MOABs and DDTs. If you think back to update 38, this particular upgrade here was OP. Not only did it affect mobs and DDTs, but also affected BFBs and ZMGs. <laughs> and an upgrade that, that OP is honestly very good. Bugs are good, but it can also be bad as well. Depends on what kind of bug that it is. If it means that a tower can be broken beyond anything, then that is a good bug. But if it's a bug that prevents a tower from being able to perform how it should, then obviously it's a bad bug. Uh, and bad bugs go by. BYE. Round 63. Let us stick these first set few of ceramics. 
And then when round, oh, when the second lot come around, they'll obviously be dealt with with the Super Monkey Fan Club strengthened base start. Please? Yeah, we're gonna do this without a question or shadow of doubt. We are gonna do this. We are in it in the long run, baby. Round 64. Hope you are having a lovely day where you are right now, whatever it is that you are doing. I am always ex eternally grateful to each and every one of you that tune into my videos. Regardless if this is your first time watching a video of mine, or if it's for 100th time, I appreciate each and every one of you for being here with me on this fantastical journey to getting a two mega pots which would otherwise be stupid enough for anybody to try and comprehend because of the fact that it's such a weak tower by itself but like a gigantic horde what should i say gigantic horde there a gigantic swarm of hornets enough of them put together can overcome the mightiest of adversaries so where we're going to be placing our third one i believe the best spot for this particular one is going to have to either be back here which i'm debating on or probably behind this log here as it's the furthest away like these two logs obviously with zero mg's not that good so i'm thinking perhaps over i'm thinking actually over here actually because of the fact that it will then have less chance of being able to pop balloons, which would otherwise be down there. And there are regrows abound. Regrows abound. <laughs> regrows abound. Look at that. There we go. Good. I hate regrows. If you couldn't tell already, I hate regrows. What about over here as our final spot? I hope, team, that this does not come back to bite me in the back here. If any zoom G's appear here, and somehow their hitboxes. Bigger. You know what? I'm not going to risk it. I'm going to place it a bit further south. Glue shrug for rain. So, uh, glue shrug all of these so that hopefully now the regrow aspect will not be a big factor in all of this. Oh, our Jewish fire has run out. We do not want that, do we now? We always want our Jewish fire in operation. Thank you very much. Although I hope that. Actually, we're going to need it for around 79, anyways. Oh Christ, I was hoping that I'll be able to end off that and then get the better Jerry's fire on round 85, which is when we actually get it. Uh, regrows again, a big fat problem with a big fat paycheck if we enable them to leave. It's called restarting the round. Oh great, for goodness sakes, I think this has somehow found its mark on some BFBs. Oh, for goodness sakes, we place it too far south. Goodness, yeah, but yeah, for some other reason, it only marginally, but it can still kind of target BFBs there. Oh, uh, I really wanted this to work as well, but I guess not. I guess all those round 81s and beyonds are going to be a bit of an issue with this particular setup here. I really wish this would not work, but I guess it does. BFBs, why do you have to be so fat? There's not a great deal going on here, which is why sometimes I leap ahead forward in time with my recordings, because all we're ever going to do is just talk about the game, and, well, sometimes that's not going to be a thing. Would you like one of my TED Talks? I'm not really feeling up to a TED Talk today. If it was just an easier scenario, then yes. Although we do have a setup going on here, I'm still not feeling that easy about any of these rounds. Like it is all entirely reliant upon ability usages and all that kind of shtick going on here. So let's just keep ourselves close to our chests and our wallets. And also our sanity as well. Did you know this kind of challenge puts your sanity to the test? And when it does, you're really going to feel a excruciating amount of pain. It seems the pickles enabled us to get through this round. And sharpening stone as well, but that's less important. Uh, glue strike coming in hot there. Excellent. Excellent. <laughs> it's indeed overclock time. At some point, we will have the trilogy of 
Super Monkey Fan Clubs, Overclock, and Call to Arms. Multiple Call to Arms, mind you. Yeah, let's get Invisibility Potion now that we've got the white variant rather than the green one. We can see further, which means we can attack like BFBs and ZMGs while they're over on this side of the track and over this side of the track as well. All very important when you have more range, but we could have gone bottom path, but then we'd either have less attack speed or less innate pierce for our benefit. So sometimes range can be found with villages and other kind of upgrades like with invisibility potion in this case. I just wish this Dark Monkey, I would have placed it somewhere else, but this is where we lie. And unless we completely be muck this up beyond, beyond redemption, we have to start all over again. Then this is where we're going to play with. I am sorry about my imperfections. But then at other times, it just doesn't attack BFB. So what is the mystery behind that? Sometimes it just has extra range where it's able to actually... It, it, it just targeted them. Why? What is the mystery behind that? Is it like a, a, a frame-perfect scenario where it has to be at the perfect frame in order for it to actually try and attack? Because that's the only possible explanation I can see it as. There's got to be one particular frame where the BFB has to be in in order for it to be able to see an attack. Even though there is a gigantic bold, sorry, a gigantic bit of lore here that would say otherwise, nah, you can't attack. Yes, somehow you can attack because we now have guaranteed lead popping potential. Even though Glue Strike enables de leadifying balloons, we still want the Jerry's Fire to be able to pop purples for that oh so delicious round 95. Down to BFBs. What can we bring about next with this particular set of accomplishments? All of that, lovely. And is that it for this round, please? Oh, oh, the Dark Monkey is kind of struggling here. Keep at it, please. Rate of fire, rate of fire. Throw enough of them at a wall and they will all stick very well. Sometimes now times of struggle. We will find just that little bit extra range, which is sometimes what these dark monkeys can do. At times, it can target a BFB over here, and at other times, it cannot do such thing. Now that is a success. Round 82 is here, but we do have fortified. So let's give this now sharpening stone better. Because now, not only do we have ourselves a pierce increase, we now have a damage increase, which is for a tower like this, getting every single kind of damage benefit is wonderful. We definitely need it <laughs> for this particular scenario. How is a base star got over 400,000 pops by round 82, middle of round 82? How is this even a possibility? And people say base star is one of the easier ones to do when it comes to the base tower sort of thing. I imagine one that would be impossible to do is base glue. Who would want to do base glue? I can tell you who. Nobody who has a hit set to their body. If we ever do hit 1 million subscribers, I will do a base glue attempt for 2 mega box. Would you like that? Then please hit the subscribe button for my sanity levels to drop. Thank you. <laughs> uh, but I appreciate your presence regardless. Anyways, it's round 84 and things are going quite well now. I definitely do want to... Yeah, we want glue storm now. We definitely need that almost permanent means of that blue storm to slow down those ceramics even though sometimes it feels like that 10 percent when blue storm is not active those ceramics just like to race to the finish line like a formula one car or one of those bloody um cars in america drag racing cars that just explodes into the nothingness a door mainly void door has a lot of experience with the nothingness, although somehow she remains. The initial setup is difficult, but once you get the ball rolling, it honestly is not the most heinous thing to try and do, honestly. This is coming from somebody who is 
pretty much not very good at these scenarios. All I try and do is form a strategy, and if it works, it works, and if it doesn't, then I just go back to the drawing board and try and think what I did wrong and what I can do to improve myself and my experience of this game. And at the moment, I am thinking that we're doing very well against multiple ZOMGs. Our issue, though, is kind of a Pierce-related thing. We're not having enough Pierce with a tower that is not intended to do this kind of achievement. But here we are nonetheless, trying to do this and losing ourselves in the process. Come on now, Super Monkey Fan Club, do not let me down. Our next objective actually is a call to arms. And then another call to arms. Alchemist to do two mega pops. Weak. Alchemist to support a two mega pops. Strong. Here's a fun fact about round 89. Every single balloon is fortified. Which makes it twice for fun to try and pop all of these. But luckily we're managing to do that anyways. Overclock, Super Monkey Fan Club. And soon we will be able to have the final piece to our strategy. Call to arms. And then another call to arms. You get a call to arms. And you get a call to arms. Everyone gets a call to arms. Although, shall we get <laughs> that defense instead? That's what I'm trying to contemplate right now. Are we stupid enough to try and go that extra bit? Or do I just call a quiz and get multiple of these so that it actually lasts longer? Rather than getting that little bit of time where we have 100% rather than 50%. And I'm thinking it's a bit more consistent to get two of these than, well... You can only get one of those, but the point still stands, okay? Oh, got it. We got ourselves call to arms here, folks. <laughs> Three forms of increasing the fire rate. Well, obviously, there's jungle drums as well, but increase the fire rate 10,000 folds. Now, Balloons, you are going to see the might of 1,000 true sun gods wielded into the darts of this gut monkey. Every single journey of balloons starts with a monkey throwing a dart at a balloon. And you cannot prove me wrong otherwise. This is how the origins of this has entailed. And if you do not believe me, just watch Orangey's History of Balloons video, which is, uh, by the way, an absolutely fantastic tale of its own. And must have taken, him, taken them so much time to try and put that video together, honestly. Like, it's an absolute marvel to watch. And I did, even though it's like three, you know, three and three quarters hour long, I did not find myself bored at any given point in time. And that is when you know content is very good because regardless of how short or long it is, it doesn't bore you any kind of a way. Like any step of a way is just filled with content. Call to arms, I'm gonna need you. Oh, Super Monkey Fan Club as well. And call to arms. And overclock. Look at all these buffs. I bet we can buff it even more if we can put a perma brew on, but we're not gonna go down that route. We'll see how we go down for around 100 and see what towers I like to place down. Although, I would really like to place down a. a, a it's not spikes. Oh, the Merv Shredder. That's the one I am after, actually. The Merv Shredder. Not producing the Spike Storm, but placing it somewhere to just deal enough initial damage so that then this can deal with the rest of the specimens inside. Now, what is more harder? Round 98 or round 100? It depends on the towers placed down for that particular scenario. Because for certain two tower chimps, they are useless against the bad, but they are highly effective on round 98. Cough, cough, level 20 psy psionic scream ability. Blue storm goes through that scenario because of the fact that they are now very slow balloons right there. Okay, our next objective is very simple. You stop popping balloons, please. But no, really, our next objective which is, you probably think is useless in its own nature, but I guarantee you, we are on the right track here. We are gonna get ourselves a wonderful 
portal arms again, but we definitely need an MIB again. <laughs> Every single upgrade of this is gonna be useless except for the tier 4 one. But by gosh, it's gonna be an absolute beautiful journey once we get to it all. You are not gonna laugh at me when I pull this off. In fact, nobody is gonna be laughing except for the fact these ZMGs are gonna soak up all this pierce. And because of the fact we don't have sharpening stone, we are really struggling with this scenario. Tis the season for you little ones, and big ones, to feel the wrath of 1,000 trillion darts all scattered across your bodies. Do not be afraid, this is not Halloween, but you're gonna feel the same punishment regardless. Round 95, and this is where we should enable all of these balloons to come this way, even though those legs are bloody, <laughs> what you would call very, very slow. Let's see, call to arms, uh, Super Monkey Fan Club, and then, once it all runs out, another Super Monkey Fan Club, and also Dark Storm as well. Oh, why are some of you faster than others? And why some of you look like you have more health than others? We can now do more damage to camos. Yeah, this is one round where we're going to really need to slow down the um, the speed of everything here to a normal state. So that we can really hone in on these DDTs. Come on now. Somehow this Dark Monkey can hit DDT. Are you actually serious? If we need to restart this entire run because of you, I'm going to be annoyed. Oh, that's round 96, but we are still sustaining heavy losses when it comes to this particular Dark Monkey. Why did I place it there? I thought it wouldn't do pops at this angle because of, well, this freaking log. It's, it's supposed to not pop stuff at this angle. Look at this, zoom geez, and this thing is not hitting them, but sometimes the BFBs, it just hits them like if it's perfectly visible. I don't understand obstacles in this game. Some hey, Ninja Kiwi, what's up with certain random interactions when they shouldn't even appear in the first place? Okay, this is probably the most disappointed someone has come to be when it comes to entering round 98, but I honestly am quite concerned about my performance in the future here. Because I kind of wanted four creepy idols down for round 100, to be honest. You know, try and control this. Would you stop popping? I'm so annoyed right now with you. Why do you keep doing this to me? Why is it when fortified ZMGs, literally even bigger behemoths than these ones, you can't see or hit, but then when like multiple of these are clumped up together, you are somehow able to see them. That annoys me. We are so close to the end of this round, but guess what? Gluestorm has to end again. But luckily we got it back. I am so annoyed by all this just because of what this placement has done to me. Why can you attack Merv class balloons from there? Look at this gigantic bit of wood in the way. <sighs> I'm so annoyed by it, honestly. This has really annoyed me. And I know why, because it somehow has the hitbox detection to be able to actually get to them. But yet it doesn't make any sense because it's behind a giant piece of wood. I'm honestly at a loss of what I can do here, honestly. Two factors which are stopping me from doing this two Mega Pops. Number one is the placement of this Dark Monkey. Number two, we should not use Blue Storm at the end of round 98. Because for some odd reason, even though the ability should still be active when you exit and re-enter the game, the ability is not active. Fun very fun this spot here yeah this is a better spot a better spot we're only on round 73 things have progressed far smoother in this spot only a few hundred pops uh stolen from this particular dark monkey in comparison to one that was over here which was like twenty thousand. 
yeah, a much better spot if I must say so myself. <laughs> uh, but we still got the rest of these few rounds left to go. This is good enough. Very good enough. Now I have a little bit of a test I would like to do. I don't know if we can get the money in time for it to be a possibility. And I don't think it's going to be the case. Uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> I was hoping to try and get an even better one of that. I guess this will have to settle as it is. Yeah. Like, what could we have done differently here? Like, probably not have one of the villagers here. Otherwise, I would have gone a, I am inevitable. But I guess that's just not going to be the case this time around. Okay, so, round 100. 15,000, now that is definitely more than enough. Pops needed for this to be even better than last time. And at some point, it will no longer be a whale, but a set of sharks and turtles. Did I mention I like turtles? There we go, that's for one, that's for one. We should be able to do it now. Pretty please. And we, I believe in the heart. There we go, we got the two million there. There's just absolutely nothing that's gonna stop us now. Yeah. Finally, we have done this abomination of a tower for <laughs> two mega props. <laughs> What is this? Just razor sharp shots and very quick shots. Yeah, that's two mega pops property material right there, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> okay, so we've got zero there. We've got zero there. We've got a huge 867 here. Honestly, this spot, I don't know why I did not do this on my first time around because it's even better than um, this spot over here, which I don't even know why I did that in the first place. This stole 15,000, but honestly, that was necessary to try and get us over the line. Don't even need, like, Spike Storm. Just Merb Shredder is enough with some quarter arms, so it lays down even more. But anyways, folks, just look at this cursed image right now. But would this be possible with Homeland Defense? I'd like to think that it would be. But then we wouldn't have any money for Merb Shredder. But then again, Homeland Defense would just be so much more powerful. That's just the pain. But then again, these two are a bit more consistent. Thank you all so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. And if you've done so, then just why have you made it this far? Thank you all so much for watching. And Merry Christmas, whenever it is for you. It could even be a year's time and it'll be Christmas for you. Anyways, folks, just enjoy the elf monkey. The cannons that shoot, well those candy canes the sleigh bell from the windmill where is the ninja in all this ninja oh you're an elf there oh you are the ninja you don't look like any old ninja i've ever seen before you look like a regular ash dark monkey ah oh, the elf sub lovely anything else any other easter eggs to try and hunt out I'm pretty sure there's a few other ones out there. Thank you all so much for watching and take care of yourselves, everybody.